Good morning. We come together in prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. As we gather to celebrate Eucharist, let's call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with God our Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. And Mass is offered today for Melvin Katanik. Kataniak. Grant, O Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first, second book of Samuel. Absalom unexpectedly came up against David's servants. He was mounted on a mule, and as the mule passed under the branches of a large turbaneth, his hair caught fast in a tree. He hung between heaven and earth while the mule he had been riding ran off. Someone saw this and reported to Joab that he had seen Absalom hanging from a turbaneth. And taking three pikes in hand, he thrust for the heart of Absalom, still hanging from the tree alive. Now David was sitting between the two gates, and a lookout went up to the roof of the gate above the city wall, where he looked out about and saw a man running all alone. The lookout shouted to inform the king, who said, If he is alone, he has good news to report. The king said, Step aside and remain in attendance here. So he stepped aside and remained there. When the Cushite messenger came in, he said, Let my lord the king receive the good news, that this day the lord has taken your part freeing you from the grasp of all who rebelled against you. But the king asked the Cushite, Is young Absalom, Absalom alive, safe? The Cushite replied, May the enemies of my lord the king, all who rebel against you with evil intent, be as that young man. The king was shaken and went up to the room over the city gate to weep. He said as he wept, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you, Absalom, my son, my son. Joab was told that the king was weeping and mourning for Absalom, and that day's victory was turned into mourning for the whole army when they heard that the king was grieving for his son. The word of the Lord. Listen, Lord, and answer me. Listen, Lord, and answer me. Incline your ear, O Lord, answer me, for I am afflicted and poor. Keep my life, for I am devoted to you, safe and servant, for who trust in you are my God. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for to you I call all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Listen, Lord, and answer me. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my pleading. Listen, Lord, and answer me.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come and lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him. There was a woman afflicted with the hemorrhage for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she heard about Jesus, and she came up from behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? He looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid. Just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people wheeling, weeping, and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the house where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kaum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve, immediately arose and walked around. At that they were utterly astonished. He gave strict orders that no one should know this, and he said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. The old country western song says, Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. I think uh, humility is the issue at hand in the first reading today. Both uh, Absalom and David and their spat with each other and their warring ways. Absalom had said that his uh, beautiful looks, his long hair, he was so proud of it. It's interesting that he would die by his head hair hanging in a tree, uh, easily a target for execution. And David, who we're told was always looking for an opportunity to be reconciled with his son, never was able to let go of pride and allow that to happen. And the whole story ends in tragedy for both of them, David weeping and crying over his lost son. Lack of humility, hubris, excessive pride, allowed them not to allow God to do what was necessary. And yet, even through the midst of it all, it's interesting, God continues to work despite ourselves and despite our pride. Beautiful story of the gospel of the healing of the woman who's restored to community and, and the child who's restored to her family. The story of Jesus uh, healing and restoring us. And I think maybe the, the whole point of it all, the main message is that do not be afraid, just have faith. Faith not in your own abilities, and your own plans and maneuvers. Have faith in God. As we celebrate today, let's uh, ask God for the grace to truly be humble. Humble enough in, the, in all our lives, in everything that we are, and everything that we do, 
we rely first and foremost on God. Nothing to fear. Just have faith. Let's stand and pray. Inspired by the confidence of the lowly ones, we bring our prayers. That the church may welcome the forgiveness, the forgotten, and the abandoned, we pray to the Lord. That there may be neither clean nor unclean among the followers of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. That women may find true equality in every nation and among every people, we pray to the Lord. That the sick may res be restored by Christ's touch, we pray to the Lord. That we may embody Christ's healing grace to all those we meet, we pray to the Lord. We pause for our personal intentions and for the needs of our faith community. We pray to the Lord. God of the humble and the lowly, in Christ you stretch out your hand to the forgotten and abandoned, restoring them in love. Give us a share of Christ's healing grace that with a touch we may restore those cast out to full life in the human family. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. It is through your goodness that we've received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our loving Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly it is right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured the passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. So with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, with all the clergy and all your people. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, St. Thomas More, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Trusting in the love of God, we now can pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from all evil, and graciously grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sinfulness, but on the faith of your church. And grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with each other. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. When we say the word in our soul.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go in peace, glorifying God by our lives. Thanks be to God.